Refs in just about every sport have been known to turn a blind eye to some rule. Occasionally, they'll turn two blind eyes like Tim Donaghy, or even a third eye blind if James Harden is taking a double step back jumper. The point is, there are some rules that just don't get called very often, whether it's for the sake of entertainment, convenience, or not directly leading to a New England Patriots victory. Some get called out by everyone but the guys in stripes, and some have been so blatantly disrespected that we wouldn't know they existed outside of a rule book. Today, we're counting down the top five blatantly ignored rules in sports, and that's coming up right after this. So I've taught you about manscaping and how cutting down the bushes makes the tree look bigger and the confidence that brings. And for those of you who put on your business socks and get down to business, if you want that call back, you better take care of your feet after your business is done. That's where Manscaped's new product, the Foot Duster, comes in. It's a spray that has active pH control to keep your feet smelling nice and gives you 24-hour stinky feet protection. There's nothing more horrific than waking up for round two and ending up full-handed because your feet smell like a hot dumpster fire. The Foot Duster was featured in Fast Company and is endorsed by pro skateboarder Windsor James, who has much nicer feet than me. So after this video, head on over to the link below, enter in my code POINT20 and get 20% off your first order. I'm telling you, the Foot Duster will keep your feet smelling nice. Again, go to the link below and enter in my code POINT20 and get 20% off. Manscaped, refining the gentleman. We're not complaining about the swallowing of whistles when it comes to traveling, mostly because you can count steps in almost every awesome dunk since the days of Jordan. Of course, with players like Giannis and Zion Williamson, it only takes a couple of dribbles to get to the free throw line in the first place. Traveling was originally instituted in the NBA as a rule to eliminate either carrying or moving the pivot foot while holding the basketball. You still see traveling called in almost every game, but it's just about always in the context of a half-court offense when the player moves his pivot foot. The other variety, the fun variety, just doesn't get whistled anymore. In fact, the NBA rule differed from the international definition for traveling until FIBA amended their own rule to reflect the looser American definition of traveling. Of course, there are plays like James Harden's patented step back, step back, players taking the ball to the hole like running backs, and most Euro steps that are blatantly laughing in the rule book's face. But between Dick Bavetta's cataracts and the NBA's lust for a better, more entertaining product, the rule has taken a backseat to the game's more spectacular elements. Most people under the age of 65 are probably okay with that. The Pirates, Rays, Yankees, Padres, Giants, Orioles, and Astros all break the same rule every single time they play a home game. I'm talking about Rule 1.04a of the MLB rulebook that mandates all fences be a certain amount of feet away from home plate. The rule states, any playing field constructed by a professional club after June 1st, 1958 shall provide a minimum distance of 325 feet from home base to the nearest fence, stand, or other obstruction on the right and left left field foul lines and a minimum distance of 400 feet to the center field fence. Not a problem for teams like the Red Sox whose 302 foot right field fence was built in the days when the scoreboard was still changed by hand, but the post-1958 parks with short porches all mock the authority of the rule book. But why does that happen? Surely with better training regiments and elevated swing paths, fences should be moving back, not in. Well, there are a couple reasons for that. The first one is simple, people really really like home runs. From the alleged juicing of balls to the certain juicing of players, baseball will always adapt towards more dingers than the other way around. The other reason is geography. 325 feet in Colorado or Arizona is not the same as 325 feet in San Francisco or San Diego. The atmosphere and direction of wind is just as crucial as an extra few feet for getting the ball out of the yard. It is, of course, ironic that baseball would show more respect for its unwritten rules than the one that actually made it to print, but that's the MLB for you. Ah, soccer players, the most natural actors of the sports ecosystem. Soccer has gained a reputation for its constant flopping, but what if I told you that there were actually rules in place to prevent it, much like in the NBA? Association Football's rulebook bans so-called diving as attempts to deceive the referee by feigning injury or pretending to have been fouled, even going so far as to do a study in 2009 that describes some of the traits of diving as consisting of a lack of contact and a characteristic archer's bow pose 
where a player will tilt his head back and thrust his chest forward while flopping. It's fitting that they see diving as an art form. Still, it remains one of the defining features of the sport, and if this video is any indication, the rules have been about as effective as an ethics investigation into FIFA. Some of the game's most prominent names like Gareth Bale, Didier Drogba, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Neymar have all been labeled divers, and sometimes a dive works. Pregunta Mexico. They do call soccer the beautiful game, and maybe that's because some of the acting you'll see on the pitch will bring a tear to your eye. Just don't expect to see a whistle of any kind. And now here's your first bonus rule. Did you know it's actually illegal for a kicker or placeholder to fake being run into? And it's never called. Rule 12, Section 3U states it's a 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty for a kicker to simulate being roughed, though they fall down like dominoes when being breathed on after a kick. However, on this play, there wasn't any faking here. Out of all the major American sports, basketball is the one that has never had an issue with pace of play. And yet, they're the one sport that does have rules to speed the game along, and they're mostly ignored. The rulebook states quite clearly that each free throw attempt shall be made within 10 seconds after the ball has been placed at the disposal of the free thrower. Like traveling, it's still called, but only enough to remind players, fans, and coaches that it is indeed still a rule. And usually, it's only called against a player that's earned a reputation for taking forever and a day to shoot a foul shot. Some recent examples include Giannis getting the long-deserved whistle for filibustering in 2016, likely because Miles Leonard was counting the tent aloud to the refs while Giannis waited and waited to take his shot. What a snitch. Dwight Howard was also gifted a 10-second penalty on Christmas Day back in 2010 before he learned to speed things up. Essentially, it's a rule that exists only for repeat offenders. Officials don't count to 10 on every shot like they do on an inbounds pass, but they might do it every once in a while to strike fear in the hearts of lollygaggers everywhere. How does anyone take longer than 10 seconds to shoot a free throw? There's no crying in baseball, and according to the rule books, there's no making friends with your opponents either. There's no crying? There's no crying in baseball? That's right, as strange as it seems in a day and age where athletes exchange jerseys and toe the line between making plans and tampering, the MLB technically prohibits any kind of interaction between opponents or spectators. According to Rule 4.06 in the MLB rulebook, players in uniform shall not address or mingle with spectators, nor sit in the stands before, during, or after a game. No manager, coach, or player shall address any spectator before or during a game. Players of opposing teams shall not fraternize at any time while in uniform. Can you imagine an MLB where a batter doesn't make small talk to a first baseman after getting a board? Or a bullpen pitcher not talking back to the drunken fans after six innings of heckling? It's woven into the very fabric of the game at this point. To be fair, the MLB has been around for long enough to have the members of the opposition possibly have been members of the opposing army in the Civil War. So it's fair to assume old Three Fingers Johnson and Chicken Feathers McCarthy didn't want to yuck it up on account of them firing repeaters at one another in the Battle of Gettysburg. Maybe as tensions have lifted, so have the rules. Somebody said I signed the ball. Put your, number. Put your phone number on it. To a cute girl. I mean, I, I know I'm struggling, but I'm not doing that bad. <laughs> And now for your second bonus rule. It is also illegal in the NFL to use words or acts designed to disconcert an offensive team at the snap. Another gem from Rule 12, which has a very broad definition, but likely covers things like the defense yelling hut hut before the snap or your mom's a whore. This has likely never been called and Jameel McLean is thankful for that. Rules are, of course, meant to be broken, or in the case of the ones in this vid, just no longer enforced at all. And it's usually the right thing to do. Imagine if every state or federal law was enforced, Colorado. Residents of Idaho technically aren't allowed to throw snowballs, just like soccer players aren't allowed to flop. But human nature always wins. From traveling to making friends to more theatrical elements of sports, there are plenty of rules that are either still in the collective consciousness or need a team of archaeologists to be uncovered. It doesn't take Indiana Jones to say, let's not count steps on that spectacular dunk, and kudos to each league for realizing that in time. But just this once, let's celebrate the refs for swallowing their whistles. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to go to manscaped.com and enter my code POINT20 for 20% off your first order. And don't forget to subscribe for more interesting videos on sports. I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to the end of this video.